I discovered that my red phosphorus contains a small amount of violet phosphorus and today we are going to recover the violet phosphorus from a small amount of this contaminated red phosphorus. To be able to do this we are going to use 10 grams of red phosphorus and about 600 milliliters of 14% sodium hypochlorite solution. To start off with the experiment exactly 10 grams of red phosphorus were weighed out. You shouldn't repeat this, but if you do it anyways, please keep in mind, not any brand of red phosphorus contains violet phosphorus. I also have tried this with highly pure red phosphorus and it dissolved completely, not leaving behind any violet phosphorus. On the left you can see about 250 milliliters of sodium hypochlorite, which are already measured out. In total 600 milliliters will be used. Violet phosphorus is way less reactive than its brother. Red phosphorus reacts with sodium hypochlorite to form phosphoric acid at first, which later on reacts with excess sodium hydroxide to form sodium phosphate. In the sodium hypochlorite solution there is not enough sodium hydroxide to react with all of the phosphoric acid. Therefore excess phosphoric acid is later on going to react with sodium hypochlorite to generate highly toxic chloric gas. In my opinion the reaction with the concentrated sodium hypochlorite solution was still too vigorous and we ended up diluting it down. With a more dilute solution the reaction was much calmer. You can see the reaction and the side reaction taking place above. More sodium hypochlorite was added because it looked like there was still some red phosphorus remaining. In the end we were left with this grey powder. I used the garden hose to dilute the solution even more and afterwards the solution was decanted off. Another washing step using dilute sodium hypochlorite solution was performed. Afterwards the water was decanted off, 5 washing steps with distilled water were performed and then I added acetone. But why do you use acetone? You could simply perform a vacuum or a gravity filtration. Well, my vacuum filtration setup is currently being used and I don't want to perform a gravity filtration. When you use acetone it dissolves most of the water which will then be decanted off and also acetone evaporates off extremely fast. Here can I have a look at the violet phosphorus which we collected. A vial was put on a scale, the scale was set to zero and the violet phosphorus was added to the vial. In total we were then left with 1.420 grams of violet phosphorus. This means that our red phosphorus contains 14.2% of violet phosphorus. It's time to prove to you that this is actually phosphorus. Just from looking at it, you could assume that this is an impurity like black sand or something else. So I held a lighter next to it. It unfortunately didn't want to start burning. Red phosphorus would have started to burn immediately. We then ended up adding more of the violet phosphorus. The lighter was held up next to it again and it didn't want to ignite again. Let's get a better lighter then. When using this small torch it looked like a small explosion. This was probably because of a high surface area though. Red phosphorus would have burned completely, not so vigorously but calmly and it wouldn't have left behind any other phosphorus. This was the case here. Some violet phosphorus was left behind and you can see that when holding the torch next to it it produced more phosphorus pentoxide vapors. For comparison here is red phosphorus burning. Anyways, this was it for today's video. If you liked it, make sure to drop me a like. If you don't want to miss out on further chemistry content like that, make sure to subscribe. And I also have to thank all of my Patreons, because you guys make it possible to film even more awesome stuff for you guys to enjoy. If you want to become a Patreon too, make sure to check the link in the description, because on Patreon you will have access to a Patreon exclusive Final Acetic Acid series. The first part of making phenyl acetic acid is already out there and I'm going to try a different method rather soon. I wish all of you a great day, hope you enjoyed, until next time.